This lecture will focus on sketching pictorial views from 3D objects and or images. I will show how to use isometric grid or graph paper, as well as discuss techniques and methods for freehand sketching of pictorial views. On the left is an image of isometric graph paper. You can find this free online and simply send it to your printer. On the right is a simple nonsense object I call a doorstop. As we discuss the techniques and methods for freehand pictorial sketching, it really does not matter if we had this actual object in our hand or we're just viewing this image. This image will be the first object my son and I demonstrate the freehand sketching process on. Next, we will use this object to demonstrate the sketching process without the use of isometric graph paper. Let's begin. So in, uh, in the engineering world, there's all kinds of different graph paper that cool. engineers can work with to help them. It's like an aid for them in their sketching or in their creation of design work and things like that. What we have here is isometric uh, graph paper and it's laid out on a 30-30 angle and you can basically kind of use this to help develop your straight lines and get a perspective in your view. Awesome. What we have here is just a simple, I call these things door stops. They're just kind of dumb little uh, <laughs> parts Yeah. that if they had any weight to them, you could use it to hold a door opener or something. <laughs> yeah. But they're nonsense parts. They're not real mechanical parts. And what we have here is just a simple little block that I thought we could uh, show the, the uh, viewers how to actually go about creating that. Cool. And so one of, the, one of the techniques that I was taught many years ago is to actually block this whole thing in before you try and really do anything. And so you have to decide... As a cube? As, as a, a cube. cube. Okay. You have to decide how many uh, divisions would be along this bottom edge, okay. how many divisions there would be across the depth of this, and how many divisions up the, the height of that. And so maybe what we can do is we can look at this and say, let's, let's imagine there's 10 divisions here. Mm -hmm. There's, uh, let's say, five? I don't know, seven. seven. Let's go seven divisions across the front and let's do five up. Cool, so should we 10, put that on there? Yeah, 10, 10, seven, and five. Okay. And so let's just begin kind of sketching and we can talk about that. All right. Where do you start? How do you start? I just pick a lower front point. Okay. And then I just begin counting back. So there's two, four, six, eight, ten. So there's a depth of ten. And I'm going to count across the front. Two, four, six, seven. And then I can connect those dots okay and we need to count up uh what did we decide five so there's two four five and then i just begin to so we need five everywhere don't we oh you did five in the middle i see i do five One, at the very front two, and then i five. just draw those back and I then need I, this paper. This and then awesome I just paper. begin squaring this all in. And I use fairly light lines to uh, kind of rough this in. Awesome. I need this paper. This is awesome paper. So once, once you have it kind of boxed in like that, then what I do is I look at the front, the front surface, and so this right here represents the front surface. Okay. 
and I decide that I'm going to draw that on what I've represented as the front edge. Okay. So let's assume that maybe this is, um, let's assume that this is three across that. And let's say that this is three and that's two down. So okay. I don't think you can. I need that's all right. You can use your, a Sharpie. I'm going to use a Sharpie. Yeah, let's use a Sharpie. Okay, so let's assume that this is three and two and three and let's imagine that that's one. So whatever we have left over and this, is going to connect that. And this is two. Cool. To that height. Okay. And so we can we can begin counting off of this thing. So there is my three. Oh, three. And it's two down. And it's three across. And it's one. And that's back up two, right? Yep. And it's and one across, one and then it's two up here. So now I can actually oh, connect you... this gotcha. in. And then that's going to be a line that's not going over any. And that thing is just. Pre drawn lines. Right. That is just running down something like that. Cool. That's what I got. So if we wanted to, we could come in here and we could you know, erase part of that line because it doesn't make sense. Yeah. And we can begin to add this. We can begin to add this line. Okay. By drawing it back across. We can, in a similar way, draw down, draw the lower line back, but don't draw it too far back. Yeah, we need to. Because you need to come down. Connect it. Connect that up. Awesome. You can drop, come up to this top line, so that line right there, and you can add that across the top. Now one we can go all the way across. You can go all the way across on that one. Okay. And you can the on one. the next one. This is fun. And then you can add the little oh, line yeah. here in the back. And what we need to do is count up two dots on the front uh -huh. and connect this back line and we just come across the front and now if we wanted to we can take time and get rid of our bounding box that we originally yeah. created and what's left the shape it's awesome we have to add our circle Oh yeah. Is the last thing that we have to add. So we want to find the center of that and it was seven across and so we want to go something like right to three and a half and we want it because it's three we want to there's our center point. Okay. Let me see. How'd you find that again? So it's seven across, so I just three and a half. went three and a half. And it's three this way, so I just went one and a half. So there's the center point. Gotcha. And then what you need to do is, as Robert described, you need to practice, you know, begin drawing circles that are in that plane. Can we get the, um, we, could, we could determine the dimensions as maybe a two, right? And would that help? We could do that. Find the... We could do that, but we run the risk because we probably didn't count it off exactly uh, right. Yeah. It's probably going to be much smaller. So it's yeah. going to be, you know, just one box or a little bit more than one box. Something like that. Something like that. Great. That's fun. I could do shapes like that all day. <laughs> so, so graph paper, isometric or regular graph paper, they also uh -huh. have some triangular paper. But graph paper can be really important in helping you improve your, your yeah. sketching skill. Yeah, I think it totally helps because you don't have to, you can count things out a little bit more. Yep. And it gives you a better way to kind of estimate, you know, translating this over to another sheet of paper. So yep. that was fun. So now what we're going to do is actually we're going to turn this paper over. Okay. And we're going to move to a different object. So here's oh, the object. That's more challenging. And without the use of graph paper, mm -hmm. we're going to try and just do, we're going to try and duplicate that image. Okay.
So I'm going to do the same steps, create a box, right? So I think it's the same way. I think you uh, create a box, mm -hmm. you decide how long this is going to be, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and because we don't have graphs, what I would do is I would say, this is the longest. So this is one. And then from here to there, that is about, I don't know, what would you say, half? Half, probably. So that's yeah. maybe a half. And then from here to the very top is what? Three quarters, maybe? Or, uh, or half I, again? I was thinking maybe two thirds. Two thirds. Oh, what did I say? One third? You said three fourths. Three fourths? I yeah. agree with you. Two thirds. So I think that's two thirds. And so whatever, yeah. whatever length we put here, we go depth wise about half that length okay. and we rise about two, two thirds, thirds of that length to create that box. Yeah. Okay. Should we do it? So I'm going to let you attack it. <laughs> okay. We're going to see how you do. All right. Let's test. So then the next thing that I would do is I would I would look at this image mm -hmm. and I would see across the front that you have basically thirds. So across this front, this is one third, okay. this is one third, and this yeah. is another one third. So and so you can that. kind of chop that up. And then if I was looking here and I was trying to evaluate about half you know it's probably this is a little deceiving this corner the way it's chopped yeah. off but i would say it's about half yeah i was looking at this dimension yep. here yeah so half maybe yeah somewhere in there yep or would you sketch that in and so what i would do is i would begin sketching this front face like we did so i would try and actually begin following the outline of the front face. Okay. I think this is off a little. So, and then I'd probably want that too, huh? This and dimension. then, and then if you look at this dimension versus the overall, it's probably about a third. A third. So it's a little deceptive okay. with this arc yeah. coming off and with this corner, but I think it's about a third. Like that? Yep. Cool. So then I'm going to round this off, right? Yep. Maybe that's, uh, it's going to be in the same spot on both sides, right? Yep. It's a even radius there. And then I would box in the top. Okay. I would box in this line. And this is going to come yep. straight down. I would add this back line. This one? Yep. So you got to put a line back here so yeah, you've got about the right up, huh? height. It's half, right? Yep. Okay. So now we can begin doing... Some details? Some details. We can chop off this top corner. Okay. And so that's maybe half. Half and half. Half. So half and half. And half. And then connect those. And then connect them. That's pretty easy. I mean, that, that shape looks really complicated, but when you start um, with the, you know, building it up with the bounding box and then dividing things up, it makes it a lot easier. Really? I was looking at that easier. corner at the beginning, like, I don't know how I'm going to draw that. <laughs> yeah. Now, if you look, this slot comes into it about two thirds of the way. So, oh, this way. So when you start looking across this line here, uh, it's about two, two thirds, thirds of the back. Two thirds back. Yep. So I could probably draw that in lightly, yep. right? Yep. And then I'm gonna draw these straight up, yep. probably. And then I can go connect those across to the back. And then you can put marks on this oh, line yeah. that are a third and a third. Third and a third. Yeah? Yep. Something like that. Yep. 
Then you round the corners. Okay. Do the same here. There's some weird rounded corners I'm drawing. I could practice those. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe even draw that that radius. That you probably would have helped. Huh? Yeah, you could if actually I had done add those. Yep. Okay. And now you just add this circle on the. That's a, like the center of this this it's box, roughly right? The center. Yep. Oops. So we could do the minor axis and the major axis again, right? Yep. And then draw that in there. I'm just gonna guess. Something like that. And then just start erasing. Yeah, I think I'm missing this line. And you right? are. You are correct. That one straight down, and then this one too. Yep. So instead of ah, erasing, let's just awesome. let's just take a uh, sharpie, sharpie, and let's just really darken that up so the viewers can see what we're doing. Cool. Where would you start? Would you start on I the would, edges? I would start on, on a the face. face. On so I would do a front face, a top face, and. That's probably what I would do. And you could probably use a ruler too, right? Yep. I'm going to go really slow, but I'm going to turn the page each time and drag the line towards my body to try and help keep it straight. All right. I don't know. What do you think? That's pretty close. <laughs> That's awesome. That's really cool. It's an easy way to build a complicated shape. It is. Because that did not seem very hard at all. Yep. That was actually pretty easy. Are we ready to do the next one? Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that segment. One of your takeaways from the demonstration should have been to become a truly good sketcher takes hours of practice. To that end, I have included here 48 doorstop examples taken from the Giesecke Technical Drawing textbook. You can easily find similar examples in the graphics textbook you purchased. To students who want to improve their sketching skills, I recommend that you do at a minimum one new doorstop pictorial sketch each day for the next 48 days. Let's review what you should now be able to discuss and answer. How isometric graph paper is used to assist in the drawing of pictorial sketches. What are the techniques and methods one can use to create freehand pictorial sketches of 3D parts and images?